friends welcome to my channel I'm Arpita Karwa and in this video I'm going to talk about G.B. Shaw or the great writer George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw is one of the most important writers when we look at it from point of view of UGC net exam because he has written several works which are constantly repeated every year in the UGC net question papers. So I thought of making a video so that I can take you through his life and through his major important works and also uh, I can take you through the most important questions that were asked from this writer in the past years. So without any further delay, let's jump right into uh, the topic and let's see who was this man G.B. Shaw. George Bernard Shaw, if you look at, was born 150 years ago. Yet, today, when we read his works, he seems to be a very modern and relevant writer. He was born in Dublin, which is a place in Ireland. And uh, the most important contribution that he made was his prominent works, for which he received not only Nobel Prize in Literature, but also Oscar. Now, he was the first and the only writer till date who received Nobel and Oscar together. Moreover, he was the one who established the London School of Economics, which is one of the most prominent institutions in London. If you have ever been to London, you must have seen that there's a place called London School of Economics and it is in the center of the city, a very, very important uh, institution, educational institution, which was set up by G.B. Shaw himself. Moreover, if you look at his father and mother, you will find that his father was a grain merchant, whereas his mother was a singer. He was not a big fan of school system, so he decided that he is going to self-school himself. He is going to self-study at home while he was assisting his father in his grain merchant business. Before he started writing dramas, he was working as a very renowned critic. You might wonder what he was critiquing. Let me tell you friends, he was a very important person in the field of essay writing for stage compositions and for music. So all these stage productions that were happening at that time, be it the contemporary dramas of Henrik Ibsen or the famed German writer Richard Wagner's drama, he was critiquing each one of them. Not only these writers, but he was also looking at the stage productions of old writers like William Shakespeare and he was critiquing, telling what was bad and what was good in all these dramas. Now, if you look at his history in the field of English drama, you will be surprised to know that two major components are seen in almost all his plays. The first important theme that you will find in George Bernard Shaw's work is his sense of humor. So, he, uh, he was a person who used to use his sense of humor in order to mock the people of his times and to mock their habits and their traits. And people used to appreciate and applaud his sense of humor so much that he gained so many fans and so many admirers. And one of these fans and admirers was the king, the great king George VII. And it is said that once he was sitting in a play of G.B. Shaw and he laughed so hard that he broke his chair. So this is a very, very funny thing that you might not encounter anywhere else. Uh, but... I am telling you this because if you quote this thing in one of your exam papers, that's going to showcase how deeply and well read you are about G.B. Shaw. The second important element of G.B. Shaw's play is how he used to look at social evils. So he hated the exploitation of working class and he used to talk about these exploitation, talk about these social evils in almost each of his plays. So make sure that you keep these two things in mind before we jump on to his major plays because you are going to see these themes occurring again and again in all the plays we are going to discuss in this video further. I would like to first mention that G.B. Shaw has written more than 60 plays in his lifetime and it is impossible for me to do justice with all his works in this little video. So I'm going to look at the major ones so that I can show you the depth of his career. But if you want to know more about G.B. Shaw and all other important literary writers in detail for UGC Net exam, you can join my online course, the details of which you will find in the description box below or you can feel free to call on the number displayed here. Now, 
Let me first start with the most important and promising work of G.B. Shaw, Man and Superman. Now this work chronologically somewhere fits between the idea of Frederick Nietzsche's Superman and the comic book character Superman. So somewhere between these two uh, dates was this play placed Man and Superman. Now what is this play all about? Man and Superman is a play which is all about G.B. Shaw's take on the classic character Don Juan. Now I would like you to put in the comment section below who was the other important literary writer who worked on this famous work called Don Juan and I'm pretty sure you're going to get the answer in the British literature itself. So Don Juan's legend was again told, retold in a different manner by our beloved G.B. Shaw in his work Man and Superman. And what is this Don Juan legend all about? It is about this man who is going on a quest for love. He wants to look for pure love and he's going in the quest and he's being betrayed by so many people, so many females specifically. It was this play, Man and Superman, where G.B. Shaw introduced the idea of life force. Now, you must be wondering, what is life force? Let me tell you guys, nobody tells you, but then this is a very important question that can possibly be asked in net exam. Life force was a concept given by G.B. Shaw. Now, what is life force? Life force, according to G.B. Shaw, is the idea that women have this force to go and mate with superior men so that they can give birth to perfect human beings, perfect human children. Now, this idea of how we should control the reproduction activities of two people was used by the Nazi party. Nazi party, remember Adolf Hitler, the great criminal of the world? Yes, so he was the one who was attached to Nazi party and it was his idea that let's take G.B. Shaw's life force concept even forward and introduce idea of eugenics. Now, what is eugenics? Eugenics, according to Nazi party, is the idea that only superior or most intelligent people should come and mate together so that they can produce more intelligent human beings. Now, I find this idea a little creepy because what we generally do is that we first fall in love and then we produce babies. But they are saying that first look at the intelligence of the man. If you find that the man is as intelligent or more intelligent than you, only then mate so that your offsprings can be intelligent. Now, this sounds to be ridiculous, but then whatever. It was Nazi party, so what else we can expect? So I've spoken enough about Man and Superman. Let me move to the next work of G.B. Shaw, which is Back to Methuselah. Now, Back to Methuselah is a five play epic. Now, what is a five play epic? It is consisting of five plays. So together, the all five plays combined are known as Back to Methuselah. And it is epic. Why? Because the theme is those of the epics written by Homer, just like Iliad and Odyssey. So it is basically about a biblical character. The title Back to Methuselah refers to the oldest man who ever lived on this earth and it was a biblical character. This play spans from 4000 BC, I would say, to 31,920 AD. Can you believe what kind of timeline G.B. Shaw has taken? 4000 BC to 31,920 AD. We are still living in 2020. The play ends in 31,920 AD. So that was the great time span and maybe that is the reason why it is known as epic because it has a theme which is larger than life. Another interesting question that has already been asked on this particular work was that in which of the plays by G.B. Shaw he condemns or he criticizes the idea of Darwinism. Darwinism, remember Charles Darwin, the great man who wrote Origin of Species? Yes, so G.B. Shaw critiqued his idea in the play and that was none other than Back to Methuselah. Next in the line is Shaw's great work for which he won Nobel Prize and the work is Yes, guys, you got it right, St. John. St. John is a work which is asked in almost every net exam. And the most important part about this work is that it is taught as 
the text in most of the universities across India in their master's syllabus. So make sure that you go and read out St. John. If you need the summary of St. John, you can WhatsApp us on the number displayed above or can contact us through phone. So let's talk about St. John more. St. John is a work which is said to be Shaw's only tragedy. Remember guys, this can be asked in net exam. It is known as Shaw's only tragedy, but Surprisingly, it has no villains. So tragedy without any villain. That's the beauty of St. John. And there's a line which is asked again and again in net exam. So the line is, she's inspired, but diabolically inspired. Who is this lady? She's inspired, but diabolically inspired. Who is this lady? And the lady is St. John. So make sure you remember these key facts that I'm telling you. Uh, what I do in these videos, in the audio lecture course that I'm offering on my website is to give you the most important things that you must remember. I explain the entire story and then give you the most important points that you must keep in mind in regards to that particular work. Because it's not the story which is most of the time asked in net exam. It is the important references important uh, information that you might miss out even though you've read the story fully so I make sure that I give you both the things I first tell you the story and then I give you all the important key points like this so that you don't miss out on anything and you can crack UGC net in just one attempt I would like to end this lecture by talking about my favorite work of G.B. Shaw which is Pygmalion Pygmalion is a beautiful work which talks about a flower girl called Eliza Doolittle she goes to a professor to take English lessons and the name of the professor is Henry Higgins now what is important about this work is that it was this work which was later uh, produced into a musical called My Fair Lady and it was for this work that G.B. Shaw won an Oscar award. So I think I've done justice to G.B. Shaw in this little video lecture in which I've tried to give you as much information as I can for this particular author. If you're looking forward uh, to see more videos in which I can talk about these important writers, important ages, important literary movements. Please subscribe to this channel and also put your suggestions in the comment section below. I'll be reading all of them by myself. So with that note, I take your leave. That's it for this video lecture. We'll meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com. <laughs>